beginning of 2011, I was just formalizing the idea that I wanted to open a woodworking school. The thing is, I'd never really taken classes. The only class I ever, ever took was a one-day joinery class. So I thought it was high time I went to a dedicated project-style class. I did a lot of research, and the closest school to the concept I had in my mind, just a small place with decent-sized class numbers, was Roy Underhill's uh, Woodwright School up in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So I thought you'd enjoy coming along with me. The school is located somewhat of a touristy town, but it's cute. It's like Mayberry. you think Mayberry would be. His front windows are just filled with all the projects he and other teachers have done over the past year that his school has been open. The first thing you're going to see as you walk in is, is the infamous treadle table saw and his latest project, that uh, the book stand they cut out one board. Uh, looking around, this shop is about what you would think it would look like if you've seen this TV show. There's a lot of stuff everywhere. It's organized, it's all in its right spot, but there's a lot of stuff. All right now we're looking at, uh, at his sharpening station. He's got all kinds of different sharpening stuff. Uh, now, while I was there, oh, right here is his oil stone. You feel a little water or oil in there and pedal away. Now, while I was there, I did borrow a few of his tools. I personally didn't have to sharpen anything. It was all sharp when I used it. He also has a separate station for just sharpening saws. There are planes everywhere. There's enough planes so everyone has access to what they need. He also has uh, different styles of planes. In fact, there's that Buck Rogers that you've read so much about. Lots of uh, chisels and everything just ready for you used. He also has enough workbenches so every student had their own. It's They are really new fairly heavy duty workbenches. The only really negative thing I could say about them is they weren't mine. It's amazing how much you get used to your own. Then there was the infamous trindle lathe. I just had to try it out. And let me tell you, you had to pedal backwards on it. I have a feeling somebody's supposed to be on the other side doing the pedaling while you do the turning. Either way, it takes a little bit more coordination than I'm used to even for a guy that doesn't know much bicycling as I do. The particular class I signed up for was Bill Anderson's Making a Traditional Toted Smoothing Plane. The end product you end up with was a handled coffin smoother. Bill also teaches at Edwards Mountain Woodworks. Now I'm not going to go into all the details on how to build a, the smoother because, well, if you want to know it, take his class. I will say that some of the key things that I learned uh, was referencing off a center line. I never even thought of that. I always referenced off the sign. It makes so much sense in this case to reference everything off a center line. And I was kind of worried about hogging out that the, the throat. It was a lot easier than I thought. You just start whacking away in a V and 10 minutes later you've got the throat cut out. But he showed me a really cool tool that he designed and built he called it a chisel scraper, and it's the size of a, a turning tool. And basically, it's a hardened steel that isn't annealed, and he puts a little lip on it, and you use your whole body. And even without referencing off the base of it, you can make a really flat bed for your plane. It was a really cool little tool. Now, at the beginning of class, Bill gave us all a packet, uh, basically classroom materials. And let me tell you, I was truly impressed the details he went into, the instructions, were just phenomenal. Uh, we're talking complete bibliography, history, step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photography, all the works. As a high school teacher, I was really impressed because he basically wrote a textbook for one lesson. Now, most of his lessons he broke up to in a short lecture, and then we went out and did what he explained. Uh, those lectures involved why we do something, how you do it, that kind of stuff. Uh, and most of the time they were fairly short. Uh, the low, he broke it up into stuff like prepping the blank, making layout lines, cutting the throat, working with the bed, breast, and wear inside the throat, cutting out the wings, shaping the wedge, and actually fitting it, which I screwed up so badly on mine. But luckily he was there to help me fix my problems, which a lot of instructors can't do. We cut out the razzi, cut the mortise for the handle, made the button. He showed us how to embed bed the button well. And then on the last day, we had time to shape out the coffin, cut the bevels and the eyes. 
Now, in the middle of the course, we did take a field trip out to Peter Ross's. He's a blacksmith. I think he worked out at Williamsburg for a long time. And he uh, actually made a molding plane iron right in front of us from just bar stock. He talked about how you shape it, the heating process, hardening, filing. It was really interesting. The only issue I really had there was that it did take up almost two-thirds of one day. And since nobody in the class actually finished the project, I think we could have used that time. Now, I got the impression he was doing this as kind of a bonus for us just to see if it would work out in the class. Probably needs to be a tad bit shorter so we can, all, we can finish. About two-thirds of the students in my class actually did leave the course with the parts to put it together when they got home and do the finishing tuning. It just would have been nice to have been able to do that there. Now, as an instructor, I give Bill props. Uh, you can tell that he's transitioning from retirement to become more of a full-time teacher, and he's really working on his course levels. He was extremely patient, especially with me as I kept screwing things up, uh, and took the time to get offer one-on-one -on -one instruction to everybody. Now, I could tell that he's still working on his timing and pacing of his classes, but that's actually a good thing. It shows that he's committed to it, and he's actually continually trying to get better. So I would recommend that he would be a good person to take a class with. Now, for me, any vacation is as much about the journey as a destination. And on this trip, I had an absolute blast. On my way up there, I stopped by my friends and got to go flying for the first time. It was in a Bonanza V-tail, which my my friend nicknamed a doctor killer. Then on the way back, I took the Blue Ridge Parkway for the first time. And let me tell you, I fell in love with this road. You are talking about 500 miles of pristine serpentine blacktop going through mountains from top to bottom. The scenery was awesome. It was springtime. The flowers were blooming. You constantly come across these cool little hiking trails. And I found quite a few waterfalls there that were just gorgeous. We just don't have that kind of thing in Texas. Uh, there were incredible vistas. And at one of the summits, I stopped in a restaurant and it had the best sandwich ever. It had so many meats on it, cheeses, and a soft grilled egg on sourdough bun. Then they took the whole thing, battered it, and deep fried it. It was pure decadence. On the side, that side they gave you sweet potato, waffle fries, and a Coke. I loved it. I could see someday coming back and making a whole vacation on this one road. And when I come back, it's going to be on something a little funner than a mini. I hope you enjoyed coming on my little vacation. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and tell your friends. As the credits roll, I'll leave you a little bit more with Blue Ridge Parkway. And please remember, it's always worth the effort to learn something new, create with that knowledge, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.